Now in this session, I have a, uh, a little quagmire of a thing. I have, what I have done already is painted this set of panels. This is Vlad's Benelli, and I have another set. Now the problem originally was Vlad was not happy with the color match. He has since come over here with another batch of paint and with the gas tank, and it turns out it matched pretty good. So what that's going to allow us to do, we're going to go ahead and prep these up. He brought some special primer and some special, we're going to do it with Bulldog. Uh, we're going through another routine, but I have a feeling it's going to be a, a pretty good match now. So my overall thing is even though we're using a new batch of paint, we do want these two parts, which are the spares for the Benelli, which was a track bike and now it's a street bike. So it's kind of a complicated thing. But we're going to try to get some of that done today. Now we're almost done with Mark's parts. Mark's due in here tonight, in fact, to uh, do some decals and talk about the final little parts of this job. But today, I want to get those parts hopefully primed for, for Vlad's job. So it's very strange with paint. And Vlad bought this white primer, which... We're going to try, and uh, again, we've tried a lot of different stuff. The number is 4633, and it's supposed to be for plastic, flexible plastic parts. But the other primer, I, I'm not sure. Now, he's got a whole other set, and I've named it the Benelli 2 and the Benelli 1. But it turns out, these the original paint was really not the issue. The issue was, in fact, we really didn't have enough paint because we had originally painted that first set twice and the track day bike was the track parts were painted three or four times if I remember right but we basically ran out of paint so we have it we have enough paint now we have enough uh, energy hopefully we can get them sanded and maybe even by the end of this day get them in primer boy would that be nice we're also before we put the primer on we're going to put on the two coats of bulldog is similar to what we did on the first set I'm not sure that was that does anything good or doesn't do anything bad, but since we already have it, and since Vlad wants it that way, we're going to give him. We're going to give the customer what he wants. So the first issue is what what had originally happened, and I wanted to kind of document this for other people. People may even have a Benelli. The original paint that came on the original parts. What you could do is just put your fingernail here and peel it up. It wasn't sticking to the plastic the way it should. And I can, I can with, with real certainty, say why that was. These parts were never prepped. They were never etched. They were never sanded. They were taken out of the mold. And maybe Bulldog was put on them. You can see they're still shiny. Now, Vlad took a lot of time. He used aircraft paint remover. And he said it took him a lot of hours to do it, and I know he's not lying, but he stripped them down. The problem is he gives them back to me all rough like this. I'm going to have to really do a really intense sanding job with some 600 sandpaper to get that whole part etched. And if you paint these parts and they're shiny like this, like this in here, you, you can see these parts were never prepped, period. That's, that's the whole reason from the factory these parts, the paint was just falling off of them. So my first job is, this is, oh, I got upside down, Rhino Wet 600. If you use, and this is just information I have from, from years of doing this, I can guarantee you, if you take 180 grit or something really, really rough, you scratch, it, you scratch it so much that you need four or five coats of primer. And that's not to your favor either. If you use, and I've got to do a little test, maybe I could use 400 even on this, but I want to get it as smooth as possible. But on the other hand, what, what's happened, because Vlad has used paint remover, we really have to get off pretty much everything. We can't, we can't have the residue of the paint remover on there. So it's not only this, it's, I want to get it clean by the time I'm done. And this, this, of course, is labor intensive. It starts out being uh, a couple hours, and then all of a sudden you look at the clock, and it's two hours and four hours. But I want to just do one little thing on, on camera to show the kind of surface I'm looking for. And every little flaw is going to show in that candy apple green paint. You're really not going to be uh, 
this is not the kind of thing where you can hide all your mistakes with with flat black because the reality is that's why when they paint something flat black they were usually hiding something okay so here's here's what I have to do now my the objective here is to do the whole part it's going to be very labor intensive you can see what that looks like no point letting the camera run we're just going to grind away at this for the next couple hours it's got to be smooth it seems like 600 maybe 400 if it gets really rough there's some spots on here but but no rougher than that now where I want to be extra careful and it's always I want to explain this it where paint is going to go around an edge that way not as critical as where it's in a valley where there's a valley this is where I want to spend a little extra time etching it and getting it rough because paint tends to shrink it's going to want to pull up out of the valley so no no matter what the part shape is that's a problem now the other thing is now that I'm, I'm almost done with this part I want to be sure to get the edges all radius nice a radius in here these are all edges that are going to be prone to peeling any place that's a valley that's where you want to spend a little extra time now the final step before I get to put the bulldog on it's going to be I want to wipe it all down with our illustrious prep wall boy how I wish we could get our hands on some Sickens M600 right now would be a, just so much better of a product but this is going to be ready for what I hope and we've got it scuffed up and up now there's really a, a problem that's probably going to surface real soon on this part I, I kind of know this might happen is because Vlad used paint remover there's a lot of gouges or scratches or whatever you want to call it it's not it's not smooth like it would be if you never had to pull the old paint off but we'll deal with it we deal with everything here and because it's not raining out there see what I thought the, the bottom line was I thought I'd get this in primer while it's not raining and if it rains then I could buff the green the two parts that are already done Okay, now this usually requires, they suggest two coats, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes apart. Now, I'm not sure, I've never, I've never thought this was a necessary step, but again, these are really flexible parts. This uh, probably could go down in history as some of the most difficult parts I've ever painted in terms of trying to get them prepped. And once this dries, we'll try to get the first coat on. We'll do that primer. See how that white primer works out. Now, in the past, I bought almost every kind of primer you could imagine, and it's it's always a uh, good luck. Some some just seem to be a lot better than others. I like the self etching, and I like that gray stuff, that a gray dupli color. Now this will be the first test part. We've got our two coats of bulldog on there dry. It looks like this goes on very thin, probably going to need two coats. We're going to find out. Anytime there's a new product, it's always an adventure. Everything's an adventure with this stuff. Looks like the nozzle is not real good on this. Well, we're going to sand it anyway, but not spraying out nice and clean like it should. What can I say? New products. Now, this has to get sanded with 400. It's going to dry for about 20 minutes. Now, I want to show something. Whenever you have a new product, Watch this. You spray them. See all these dots coming off? It means this, this nozzle is terrible. Now I, I have some other, look at all the dots, this is terrible. So 
Here's my first introduction to this material, and I would say make sure you get a clean nozzle, a new nozzle or something. That's terrible. The way, the way this sprays, it's going to make a ton of extra sanding. And on the parts, you can see there's a lot of little extra dots and everything. Really annoying. It's, it's very annoying. A little thing like the, the, the cap. Now, Vlad seems to stumble upon these, these materials. I don't know. His body shop guy says this is the way to go. I'm really not sure. So I have a second coat on. While that's dry, I'm not real happy with that primer, by the way. While that's dry, but, but of course the customer is always right. While that's drying, and they say let it dry 20 minutes before you sand it, I'll go over and spend a little time getting the other part prepped up. Now it was roughly a two hour job to get rid of all this crap from the paint remover and all this the giant awful scratches that are on these parts but and I'm not so sure about that white primer right now boy I'm I'm not having good feelings about that white primer especially the way it sprays but while it's drying I can get a little bit of a bite out of this part I'm not sure I'll get both of them primed today but right, we'll do whatever we can here we got another couple hours now as I'm looking at this part I've got this one ready for the bulldog the white one is pretty much ready to sand. It's nice if you can bounce back and forth. It just would be nice if it was a, a little bit sunnier today. And it would be nicer if that white primer sprayed the way it should, but I'm not sure. And it may be because that's that's a big name brand. Maybe you can buy that in quart cans and spray it on. I don't know. We'll do some more research on that. But we'll give this white primer a try. I'm not sure it's going to be what we want. If it isn't, Vlad can be the one to make the decision. Okay, now it's a it's a 20 minute thing between coats of Bulldog, 15, 20 minutes. So just basically. This can now dry, and again, I'll start sanding the white part while that's drying, then come back out, primer it. By bouncing back and forth, should make a little bit more efficient day. Okay, I have about half of the panel done downstairs. Oh, it's time. See if this will spray any better. Not really. <laughs> it's a mess. That's actually probably the biggest pain in the ass is it's going to be a lot of extra sanding to get rid of those dots that are on there. And I see there's old dots on everything already. Anyway, we'll tough it out. Just means extra sanding. And actually, it looks like it's not going to rain now. It looks like the sun may even be coming out. Who knows? Now, what I did before, I put two coats of this on, and 15 minutes of more dries very quickly. And then, of course, you got to take it and sand it out. And then that part could be drying. I'll go downstairs and finish sanding the part that's down there. So my next goal here is on this panel, 600 sand. It could be 400, it really doesn't matter, but there's a lot of little, little imperfections and I just want to make sure. I'm going to put one more coat of primer on this and then we'll be ready to put shoot some green on it. If not today, the next time we get to work on it. But right now what I have to do is, and you can see how quick it comes off, Here's the thing is with a with a glove, look for any little spots, any and I see a spot right there. You just have to be really, really ultra fussy about getting these out because they're gonna show through in the green. That candy apple green is a killer, boy. Any little speck in the paint, any little low spot is gonna show right up. So the trick is, and it's a trick that we've shared many times is just do it by hand don't bother looking at it doesn't do anything your hand tells you where the where the mistakes are
Well, once you sand the first coat of primer, you see all the little flaws, all the little mistakes that are in this. And basically now the second coat of primer, the third coat, whatever we're going to do this, we hope we're going to get a nice smooth coat of primer on end and we'll be ready for the green. Now two things would have made this a lot easier. If we could buy this material, if this is what he wanted, I would have thought, and of course it is, it's a big name brand. Buy this in a, in a quart can or whatever and use our own spray equipment instead of this, this crazy little nozzle that they have. That nozzle is the prime, is the problem. And the idea here is just to get as many of these spots with as high spots covered. And the ultimate goal is to have the, the smallest amount of primer on there possible. Because these parts have to flex and the thicker you make the paint, the more prone they're going to be to cracking and Now, assuming we don't have any real issues here, if it isn't raining an hour from now, we should be able to put some green on this. That part looks like it's going to be fine. And now this part, is going to need a thorough sand out. And again, there's a lot of little imperfections in this. All from having to remove the old finish. If we were painting brand new parts, we'd already be done, but that's not the case. So this one's got to get sanded next, then a final coat of primer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the weather. If it's appropriate, we'll try to spray some green on this. Okay, it looks like we're pretty much ready to shoot some green on this. You never do know, of course. Now, I'm doing exactly what this primer says to do, even though it's a new product. Normally, I would let my primer, the old self-etching primer, dry overnight. It says to let it dry 20 minutes, which I've exactly done. And maybe that'll result in some improvement. I don't know. But if it doesn't, we will never use this primer again. And what I want to do, I want to just do a quick, whoa, a quick paint test here on the edge. Now here's the issue. The issue with this is we're really cutting this close on paint. So I'm going to try to get the minimum amount of paint on here and then see how much I have left over. I got the first coat of green on and it looks like we'll have enough paint. I never really know. You know I look at that and well, we're just going, to, just going to try to really get this stretched out as much as we can. Don't want to take any chances just in case we have to do any little touch-ups on these panels. Well, the color looks like it's fine. The only problem is I just uh, I don't feel good about waiting for the weather to break here and we're expecting rain momentarily. And what's going to happen if I'm in the middle of doing a top coat when it rains, I'm screwed. So I'm going to put this aside. Tomorrow is supposed to be a clear day and count my lucky stars for this session. Now it looks like we made a really good decision here because it has just started to drizzle and drool and if we were in the middle of painting this when that happened it would be a mess. Looks like we, uh, we at least a little bit lucked out. Anyway that's gonna of course dry overnight or maybe even longer depending on the weather. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, enjoyed watching this Benelli come back to life from the dumpster. Anyway, thanks for watching.